And if he just stepped out with the food. Why? Yeah. Pardon? Why? Because the camera if I was facing it that way. Uh -huh. It would automatically the arms would close down. Okay. And that's where your vision and fleet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready? I uh, welcome you to the workshop Custom Fields. Um, my name is Alan Moritz. I'm from Switzerland doing Joomla extension science 2007 and I'm in various groups in Joomla development. The agenda of today is I will give a little bit of information about uh, how we brought custom fields into the core, then a short introduction about the concept of it, uh, custom fields plugins, what they are, then how we integrated it into Article Manager, and then a demo, how we integrated it into users and contacts, and at the end, then layouts and layout overrides, how to adjust it to your, um, to your website, and then quick uh, intro about how we implemented ACL and multilanguage, and at the end, questions and feedback. Can you please close the door, I guess, because of the noise? Um, first is, uh, it's quite a, they call it a workshop, it's well, one and a half hour. So in some way, probably we can do it some kind of interactive that I show something and you guys can do it by your own a bit and then we switch back to the, to the presentation. Um, that we, that it's not kind of like of these classical sessions we normally have in Joomla days. Um, <coughs> as I do uh, Joomla extensions, one of the biggest feature requests was always to get some kind of custom fields. I had a look then how other extensions were doing it and most of them they were sharing the same pattern. So instead of that I implemented it in every extension I have, I thought making a core, a base extension and every other extensions are going to use that. I called that package then DP fields. And I finally figured out then that I can use that for content and for articles. And so I offered that to first to my customers and then uh, for free to everybody and we got go a lot of great feedback for it. Some people even asked to make that available for modules. So some there were some use cases about having custom fields for modules. Um, the next step was then I asked in developer mailing list if that would be of interest for um, to bring that into core. Again, got great feedback for it that people were actually interesting. So we started the custom fields project um, somewhere like last year in February and we finalized it and merged on 30th of October into core and since then till the final release this year in April I guess uh, we've, we fixed bugs and did some smaller architectural changes but basically the principle is still the same as it was initially with DP fields. So what's the concept of it? First, I always when I do a presentation about custom fields, it's, um, I say what is not. It's not a CCK. Uh, we have in Joomla, we have, uh, we have a lot <coughs> of great CCK extensions. So the aim of custom fields is not to replace them. Um, so you will not have with custom fields uh, dynamic content types or dynamic page builders or whatever you, you want. It's, um, it's really, it should be something simple. I will afterwards then explain that. But it's also not a standalone component. So you will not have a new menu item which says custom fields where you can manage custom fields. It's, it's really, we'll see it later then, it's integrated into each extension or component into the core. The core of custom fields is a component and the system plugin. Um, they are basically, they have the same interface as every other extension in Joomla. They look the same as like when you're editing articles, 
they have the same list layout or when you edit the custom field it has the same form layout. In the background it integrates through a system plugin into Joomla events, that's a little bit technical but uh, the main thing is even it's a it's also component similar to what we have with categories when you for example edit or manage your article you you have the categories in in the sidebar and the same happens then with fields um, it's based what is in core on the core custom fields um, so we are not kind of like making something detached we're really using what is in core already uh, the form itself it looks like that these fields belong to, uh, to the form already and it's for sure it's MVC coded as an ordinary Joomla 3 extension and it, loses, it uses layouts to generate any kind of output uh, that will give the site integrator the flexibility to um, to adjust it to the site need and what was also a great um, I would say what was for me very important is that it should be easily integrated for existing components that the component uh, developer can with just a few modifications if he or she follows the Joomla standards to integrate it into his own extension Every custom field, we'll see then afterwards, is uh, implemented as a plugin. There is a new plugin group fields, and every plugin has its own parameters and can be disabled, enabled, as you already f are familiar with, uh, with plugins. So how did we integrate that now into the article management? Uh, when you open the article manager in 3.7, you will see these two new menu items in the sidebar, fields and field groups. When you click on field, you have then like a standard list view, as you, are, as you already know with articles and contacts. Uh, you can unpublish them, archive them. But the first thing you mostly do is you create a new custom field, you click on the, on the new button, and then a uh, form opens where you can uh, set the title of the custom field and the type and then you can save it and you have your first custom field. The type is very important. It defines what the custom field is. It can be even a calendar, an editor, a color field. The important thing he here is that after you created the custom field and you saved it, you can't change the type anymore. This is because of data integrity. Um, when you have your, for example, a calendar custom field and you have your articles which have already um, date output into the custom fields and afterwards you want to say, okay, that, that's now a checkbox. The checkbox will don't understand the existing values. So you really can only define the type when you create a new custom field. When you after you save the custom field, when you go to the Articles Manager and edit an article, you will see a new tab, Fields, and there lists all the custom fields you have created. You can then set a value for it, and when you save it, uh, the custom field is saved on the articles, like, for example, the title or the images or additional publishing options. It feels like the same as it's, it should be in, as a like it belongs to, to articles like, like ever. On the front end, these fields are per se automatically displayed above the description. We'll see that then later, how you can customize, how you can adjust that then to your needs. But the fields itself will auto automatically be rendered below the, the article details. Are there some questions till now? Uh, so I have a question, who used custom fields already? No, quite a few, so, the, yeah. so then this is not something new, then I probably uh, I will then make the demo a little bit faster. Um, we have here a fresh Joomla installation. Can you see it? 
Should I make it a little bit? Uh, font cut. I don't know. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. So basically, when you here go to content and then fields, you you see here an empty list. When you then create one of this field, you can for example say that's demo field. And when you save and close it, you will see that that field appears in here in the list. Basically, when you go to the article, create a new one, you will see a new tab fields, which has that field. And you give it demo. Okay, I save that, and when I go to the front end, I don't see the, the article, I need to feature it, it will appear. And then you see here the, the demo value. It's, um, it's really just takes a couple of steps to get into that. <coughs> so. The thing is, the important thing is that all the custom fields, they are only can be managed on the, to, uh, on the back end. What you can do, we have here also the search tools to filter it uh, by status. So for example, when you unpublish it, it will be then, it will disappear for sure. And that's how basic principle of custom fields works. So we have here some different options in the field. Um, we have a name that's basically the name of the of the element in the form. We have a label. So when I, for example, when I change that, the special label. Will then here appear with special label and not the title. It when you create a field and and give it the title, then the label itself adjusts automatically. You can uh, also give it a description. That's here then. For example, when you. When you have here the article, when you edit the article and you go to the field, the description will appear then as a pop-up um, to give it some more explanation what the field is for. Then you can set it if it should be required or not. Uh, that means, for example, when you when you have even when you have publishers on your site, you can define you can tell them that they need to fill a value for that, and also you can give it a default value. This means that when a new, for example, when a new article is newly created, the fields will have that default value. This then also when I write something into the field and I clear the content of it, it will automatically get the default value back. These few settings are the main setting of a custom field. Um, every custom field has these settings. And what will appear then below the default value, that's then specific settings of a custom field. So for example, for we have here text field. For a text field, you have um, a filter. You can say, I want to allow every output. I want to allow only save. Uh, save HTML input, only text, integers. Uh, you, can, you can't see this tilde below. But basically, you can just say what this custom or this text field allows for input. For a uh, normal input, this is not so important, but it comes then more, you have the same filters for, um, for text areas and also editors. And especially on editors, it will make more sense if you just want to say, OK, I just allow save HTML um, code into the editor and not that people can do some, some damage to my site. 
these additional attributes um, are for sure different to every custom field. For example, when I, when I change the type of a new and then create a new one, you will, for example, do a list. You'll see the page got reloaded and then we, we load additional values for it. For example, on a list you have the multiple attribute that you can say, okay, in my drop-down list I want to allow the multiple attributes to be selected and for sure you can define the, the list values. You can say, okay, I have here text, for example, which says, I don't know, One we can give it. One we can give it the value and then additional with additional attributes. We'll see that then later when we do the, the form field how these lists work. But basically the principle of it is when I change here um, the field type, it reloads the page and it adds then additional additional attributes I have to fill in. What you see here is that most of them are use default, and that means, uh, not, not use default, but use from plugin, and that means the plugin itself has the same attribute, and you can define then that attribute in the plugin, and if you change that, all custom fields will, change the, will inherit that setting. If you, for example, if you select that here, something else and you change in the plugin for example for the media field when you uh, select tooltip and in the plugin you select an inline it will in that specific custom field it will stay on a tooltip but all custom fields which um, have the preview setting used from plugin will then have the, the inline setting so that's something most plugin most um, custom field plugins have So, what do we have for other attributes? We have for sure the status. Um, this, with that you can publish, unpublish uh, a custom field. Um, we have the options. There's a placeholder field, which I guess is only um, used in the text field. But uh, that's something technically an attribute which exists on every, every form field. Uh, you have a render class. The render class is used when you display the field automatically on the front end. And you have an edit class which get up, also it's a, CS, it's a CSS class which get applied when you um, edit the f when you display the field on the front end. And you have also an edit class which get applied when you display the field in the form. That basically means when you um, when you want to add some special special styling to it or whatever, then you can can fill in these these two values. There is a show label attribute which tells the form to show the label or not, self-explanatory. And there is also a show on attribute which um, which offer which offers a way to say okay that field should only appear in the form when you edit an article on the front end or on the back end or, or per default it's set to both and like that you can control where you want to show the field and the last setting is the automatic display that means when I go in, when I go to change that go back to my demo field I said initially the field is displayed below um, below the details before the before the description. So with that setting, I can then define. Okay, I want to show that after the title. I save it, and then when I hit the five, you will see the field appears after the title. There is another setting that you can say um, I want to show it after description. I'll go back quickly back to the to the article. Um, <coughs> and I save it, and I say here on the field itself that I want to show that. It's called after display. It's a little bit, um, yeah. It's more, that's because technically the event 
calls itself after display event. But the important thing is that the field itself is now displayed after the description. See it here. And like that, you can control where you want. Um, I'll, yeah? Um, can we can have several custom fields where you control the order in which they show um, relative to each other? Um, not relative. You can define the ordering through drag and drop in the, in the field list here and like that you can then right, I guess that would be the order. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it takes in that order into account um, you can even you can also say I want to show that uh, I don't want to show that field in the, in the automatic list because I want to use that in the override or whatever so then then it's like you can set then that setting to just to know there's also no setting I will show that then in the override section how we are going to we can use that. Um, there are publishing options like the create date, modified date, and the ID of it, and who has modified it. And there are also permissions. We'll come to that and also later how to really use the permissions for that. That's basically how it is. So even as this format is new, it's, it's not called a session, it's called a workshop. So should you make a kind of a quick, um, like five minutes where, where you guys can play around with custom fields or sh because I'm not sure if everybody has a laptop with it. Otherwise, otherwise I just head on and do some more, more deeply explanation. Okay, I guess uh, I guess we are heading on. <laughs> um, also, a nice little feature which people like is um, that when you edit an article, you can directly display the fields in the article description itself. There is a new editor button field, which basically shows you the list of, um, of custom fields and then when you, when you want to say okay I want to show that demo field here inside my, my description and you can save it what happens now is that the field itself will appear two times inside the description afterwards so now I go back to the field and say that the automatic display is disabled it should be set to no and then it will not be automatically displayed and I can really use that field then in the description itself uh, we will then afterwards see how we can even use that then in the overrides but for people who are going want to use that they they can def they can use them that field just in the description. It's similar to what we have for modules to load the module in the in the article description. There's the same syntax. Uh, you can add your fields, but you can also add them field groups. We'll see that later what that is. But yeah, there is. If you want to have the fields in the description, you can use just this simple syntax. So, what we have as well, I was before talking a bit about the field groups. Um, field groups is, a, is an additional uh, entity we have in custom fields. It allows you to group the fields. You can create a new field group. Can give them a description and there's also again the publishing options and some permissions and status access and also language and when you close it and you're going back to the fields then you can assign these fields to a group say for example I want to 
move that field into the, the special data group. And when I go back to edit the article, we have here this tab fields. And when I refresh the page, instead of the tab fields, you will see the tab special data. So you can, you can really give it a name which makes you, which it will be useful for the, for the user itself. It goes a little bit in line with the, with the talk from, from Brian. It will, you can then really adjust it to the, to the understanding or to the meaning what the people expect to have here and not just have fields, which is per se not so self-explanatory. Because they get grouped into the same time if you've got multiple groups and you end up with a long list. When you have multiple, yeah. But that's more than a problem of the yeah, of the tabs itself than of the tab which But yeah, it's that's why I guess articles have these options what to show uh, or what or yeah, on the edit screen which tabs you want to show and then you can narrow them. But yeah, you're basically true for every group will be created there. But if a, if a group doesn't have this um doesn't have fields, it will not appear. We'll see then also the description of the group is important here as this alert, I uh, barely can see it, but basically it's, a, it's an alert box here, which you can, uh, which is displayed as the description. Are there questions for that? What are some typical use cases? I haven't used this yet, but I like it. I can mm -hmm. come up with some ideas my own actually how I will be using this. But uh, what are some typical use cases of actually how people, like those, when you started doing this, what was the use case that people wanted this for? Um, is there somebody here who is using that in production, perhaps? Yeah. Well, actually, we used it, for example, to add a uh, category icon to the bottom of articles, for example, so editors could choose a uh, hot topic and you'd get a hot topic icon description with it to add at the bottom of the article. Yeah, even it's, um, have you been on the, on the talk uh, from Brian Team? Yes. It's, for me, it goes a little bit into that direction that before you had this description field where you had to make your own stuff there and with that you can just structure it. You can say, okay, I want to have here a calendar f or I want to have here a date or uh, I want to have here, a, I don't know, an image or whatever. It's really like, it gives you special, especially with overrides, it becomes them really powerful. Um, I will see, I use it personally, I use it to, to kind of like structuring the data better on the site and also on a, on a small membership site. We'll see that then for users and contacts. Okay, some other questions, yeah? I'm just trying to say like, I've used it on a recent project where a site wanted like a number of distributions globally. So they wanted a list and look a number of information like addresses and stuff. Uh, so I've used the custom fields to create each field to be Location set as countries, so like distributor A, it's countries which start with Albania or anything like that, and with those, and just mark with a few data in those fields. And then once that's loaded into the article, I used a uh, module to have like a nav bar for those letters, and then each letter's clicked, use a bit of script to load whatever's displayed for those distributors. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Did you create your own custom field for that, or just worked with the course? We created how we've done there, um, and then later on, set the group as distributor, so I've named the distributor with, for the article, and I've loaded it just for that article, for the whole article. Okay. And then um, it's all loaded all there after displays. Okay. And then I used a bit of JavaScript to like hide all of what it says, and then once there's a letter clicked, it will hide the rest and load the other custom field of the pages up. Okay. So that's what we really well. Nice. Yeah? Uh, are we also going to look eventually into how to actually work with the data you get from those fields? Um, I mean, one 
one of the applications that we are currently looking into is basically that uh, for editors you'd have uh, like a set of fields where you can select certain groups. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not about locked in users, but uh, just about uh, a parameter you get as a get variable. Uh, so what we're looking into is basically you get like uh, user type is seven, and if the custom form field seven is ticked, you'll be uh, shown uh, some articles for group seven, and if it's uh, unticked, those articles won't be shown. For example, that's um, basically what we're currently uh, trying out. I'm not sure if that's uh, use case. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that, I'll look at that. Now. Yeah, there is an additional workshop in the afternoon about easy layouts, kind of like I'm presenting what you have in core, like really the basics, and even it starts to get in projects or extensions on top of custom fields, and easy layouts will be one of them. Um, for me, also a nice feature which I use on my production side is that you can assign custom fields to, ca to categories. For example, when I have here um, two categories, I have the standard one, then uh, category. I can then say, create a new field which is like second field and I assign that only to the demo category. So when I go then back to the articles and edit here the article, this field doesn't appear here. When I create a new article and I change here the category, you see the page get reloaded and the new tab appear which has, which has the name fields and then here the second field appears. So it gives you the flexibility to assign fields per category that they, you can, that they will appear only on the edit mask and also on the front end. So it like, gives you this kind of freedom that not every, f every field appears then on every form and you have to do some CSS or JavaScript magic to hide the fields and show them only on the categories you want. It's really like you can say, okay, I want to show that only for that category. Um, yeah, what else do we have? I guess for the for the fields itself, the access and language I will explain them later. Yeah, that's basically is it for uh, for the custom fields itself for the options. Is for me is important is the concept of it. Is that clear? Is that understandable? That's good. Then. Some of the language can be made a bit clearer on the head page because Bell just came onto it and built it. Not just built it. You, you've explained it now, but I think it's, it's probably worth making some of those phrases a bit more obvious to yeah. people what coming to this. What happens is I look at it so I don't understand most of this. I'll look at it later and yeah. then I'm not yeah. using it <laughs> because I'm going to look at it later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, all after the display and after copy. This is stuff you mentioned already, but you know, mm. the users, I think we need to make some language a bit uh, more basic. I guess there was even a pull request for, for this on after display and before display. And yeah, the, I was not so deeply involved in that pull request, but they didn't get to an agreement. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like dealing with language strings in Joomla is quite, <laughs> it's quite a challenge. but. Yeah, the, for me it's like open an issue and then I guess people, we can discuss that then in the issue tracker, how we would name that better. But it did, it did put me off and that's why I left it till later, which never happened. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's always, I, I guess that's to some degree, it's a general problem of Joomla, how to name this stuff better. And yeah, it's when you used it the first time, then afterwards it's clear, but to get into that, it's. Good. Then we come to the chapter about users and contacts. Um, you can create uh, custom fields for users. They are editable then on the front end. Um, the same happens for a contact. They will be shown then on the front end. You can't edit contacts on the back uh, on the front end, but you can show them, list them. Um, there is an option to show the user custom fields in the in the contact detail page. I will show that then afterwards. It's, um, it allows you to create a kind of um, membership site. So when you, when you need custom fields basically for users, it allows the user then to, to edit the custom field. And if the user is connected to contact, this custom field will be then displayed on the front end. And it's also possible to do um, to custom fields for the contact form, for the, for the mail form. Then when somebody wants to contact you through the, mail, through the contact form, these custom fields will appear then. And they have, if they are required, they have to, to choose them. I will also show that then afterwards in the demo. Um, it allows you basically to add custom fields to contact forms. Good, let's dive first into the users. Um, when I go to users, I will see here also two, um, two new menu items, field and field groups. And I can say, okay, I create a new, uh, new field. I make here a list. And I say, for example, application. Um, define here some list values. Example for text, I give here basic um, pro const pro. That's here, the, it's a this subform. You can drag and drop them around. It's, uh, that's something which exists in core. You can delete them if you want. But uh, the important thing for us is that we can define here a list. And when we save and close them and go back to the users, I have here three um, demo users and for when I open this one, I see here again a tab fields. And I can then choose here the certification this user has. And this will be then also available when I create here a new menu item on the front for, for the front end with the profile. Then as user, user. When I go here to the profile, I will see here then that field certification. <coughs> when I edit the profile, you will see here the basic settings, and then you will see here the field. And we have we have this um, with ACL. We block that initially. It's only available for uh, super admins. So what I need to go is then to the user manager <coughs> to change here a specific setting. There is a new setting, edit custom field value. There was again <laughs> a big discussion how to name that. <laughs> um, I can save and close that. And now the user, the user can change here his certification. 
So he has here now basic certification. It's simple, same principle as with um, with uh, contacts. For me, as I have, uh, I'm part of a, I don't know the, the English word is NGO organization, for it where I maintain a website and there we have a, a small membership website. And what I did then, uh, I had first, I had a um, community builder installed and it really bloated the site with additional CSS and JavaScript files and yeah, finally, for me it was way too much. I just the only thing I needed is um, that users can edit custom fields. And for me, then the point was as for some reason the registration with Community Builder didn't work as we enabled it. And then I fi finally gave up and at that time I had DP fields and I tried, okay, let's try to make, to make it the way as this um, contact um, profile plugin is working that basically it makes the connection between the users and the contacts and I tried them to do the same and it was relatively easy to do so what we what I did now is um, on components uh, on contacts I have here also the fields which I can create for custom field um, the ordinary for contacts but that's at the moment not so important for us what I do now is when I create a new contact like, um, I name it like that you will see then later why and I connect it with the user and then don't fill any other custom field for it and save then creating new menu item which says then members of the site and a new contact list contacts and categories I select here the standard one and when I close here, you'll see here this new menu item, members. And then you have here this, um, this user or this contact base. Going to, to make it a, a little bit more user friendly that we can see. Say it. For now we disable the form. So and then you will see now here the custom field of the user is displayed now in the contact. And that basically allows you then that your members of your site can edit their own profile setting custom fields and when you want to show that on the front end then you can do that with a with a contact list um, to see how what what is what all is possible we have this um, this site and here the the members that's only done with um, with com contact and users so I made here an override, I added the field into, into the list and there is a, also an avatar field, I called it avatar field and the people can then upload them when they edit their, uh, their profile and finally it, uh, it, um, it turns out then like that, that's everything, all of that is then um, our custom fields. And when I go now to uh, when I log in on my site here and um, edit my profile, I can uh, change my address. I can change where I do practice that, and it's kind of like really in a small way uh, a membership site. Yes. Is there a way to make fields? Um, you have to when you create a profile, for example, the user has to complete. 
which, which are then not shown on their public profiles? Um, yeah, you can you can um, you can change that through access levels. Then that will be probably the way to go. Is that connection between users and contacts? Is that more or less clear? <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, that <laughs> um, I mentioned before that you we can uh, create custom fields also also for the contact form. Um, to do that, I need to go back to the fields in the backend for the contact, and per default there is a drop down, which uh, allows you to, uh, to create custom fields for different. Um, we call it technically it's a context, but basically for uh, for different sections. So I can create custom fields for uh, for contact. I can create custom fields for um, for the mail form. I can even create custom fields for categories. So when you're, for example, in, um, in the article manager, you can create also custom fields for uh, for categories, which will be then displayed in the category list. Um, Another use case is, for example, for extension developers, uh, for my uh, event system extension. Uh, I have their events, booking, tickets, locations, and like that it allows me to create, to let the, my uh, users create custom fields for every, every kind of entity they have. So I go here to the mail entity. I create here a new custom field, I call it the Department. Make you again a list. Then I say here that um, sales. Yeah. Uh, can I ask if there's a way to import things into a list sort of quicker than um, 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 than that sort of list? Mm. Yeah, at the moment not. If you have a hundred things, you, you, you can yeah. yeah. No, at the moment it's no, not. Probably it would be then easier to to write your own custom field and yeah, yeah or not. Yeah, good. It depends on the data. It's yeah. Probably. So we created now this department custom field. So when this means that um, when somebody makes a contact request through the contact form, he will see here then a new custom field where he has to choose the department. Again, need to add here the option, the permissions for the public to, uh, to edit the custom field value. And now when they I hope it works. It's not always Then I can choose here the department. For example, in that case, I have here accounting. I can click on send mail. And now that's now all the mails are redirected to that mail catcher to demonstrate how the mail will look like. And then I have here my uh, my request. And on the bottom is then the department which was which this mail or this request contact belongs to. So it kind of allows you then to to make some. I don't know, internally some routing to which department that this mail goes or finally just some decisions a 
according to the input of the users. Um, I don't know how we are in time. What? 25 minutes. Okay. Good. Then um, <coughs> come to layout. Um, who did already a layout override in Joomla? Template override. Okay, so you're experienced with that. We are using a J layout. It's kind of like it's a it's another form of this. Uh, normally, you do with the default PHP, you copy it, or with the template manager. And there's this J layout, which kind of allows you to to make some more fine grade uh, overrides. And we are using this this layout to um, to create the values of the fields. So basically, that's that's rendered through a PHP file and also for the automatic display. It allows the site integrator to um, to really override that and adjust them to the needs of the site. For the for the value itself, it's um, per default when you have a plugin, for example, in um, the text plugin we were using before. There is a there is a file in plugin fields text temple text.php which basically renders the output for the text field. You can override that in your template when you create a, in your HTML folder uh, a folder plugin fields foo or plugin fields text with a text.php. I'm going to show that. Uh, if here in the template manager, we have here just templates, then protostar, and here we have this HTML folder, and I create create in here a new folder in the HTML. It's a plugin text. I create that folder. And inside that folder, I create a new file text. It's a PHP file. And initially, it's empty. I copy now the file from the ori original location. It's um, here in plugins, fields. text, temple, text. It's nothing, nothing magical out of that. But basically, that's then the content to generate such a text field. But I want to say, I want to say that now all the values are um, rendered as strong. And when I save it, and I go back to the front end. Um, here, the article, you will see that the value which we saw before was normal text is now rendered in strong. And like that, you can then for lists, and especially there is an, uh, there is an image list um, field which displays a list of, uh, of images. Like that, you can then really uh, interfere how you want to display the, the images and stuff like that. Go back to the naming of the override. Just of the naming. When you created the override, yeah. The file. No, that one there. Um, okay, so it's got to go in plug fields something. Yeah, it's HTML. Yeah, but it's, it's actually what to call it. It's the same as the as yeah, okay. the right. plugin itself, plugin fields, and then the type of it. So if you was that like a, an image field there, would be plug in underscore fields underscore image? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just so I don't have to spend ages guessing. <laughs> I have to look at the code and find out what's done. Yeah. Um, 
The same is now possible for the overrides. For example, we can also in Template Manager create an override. And it's possible to create override for all when you do an override of comp fields or then also per extension. It, um, it allows you then to say, okay, I want to I wanna make that override, for example, only for one for com content in that case or for com, for com contact or com users. It also allows the, the extension developer to, to make um, overrides for his own extension when on this automatic display events, when these fields automatically are displayed as they are rendered differently. For example, um, on com contact, these, uh, these fields are displayed then in another way than, I don't know, we have that, where is it here? These fields are dis rendered here in a different way than on for articles. That's here as a DL list or something like that. So in our case, we want to make now an override for com fields for all of them. So what we do is um, we, we go here to the template manager and create, click on fields. And now with an override created in HTML layout, layouts, com fields, fields. And I go then to that folder. And now I want to say, it's again at the beginning, it's a bit of, um, of PHP code. But then the important thing is that here, that's the DL list which kind of renders then all the fields. And I want to say that list is now an alert box. Again, when I save that field, uh, that layout override, and I go back to the article, <coughs> then normally this, this should it should come into place. Almost, I don't know why this is now not working. Demo effect, probably. Ah, yeah. The thing is because it's um, it's rendered inside the description. Yeah. So go back here to articles. I remove the field here, save and close it, go back to the field itself, <coughs> give you the option. So. Now I have them rendered as alert box. So that's is that clear how these overrides do work? When I go now here to the to the contact, you will see this field still renders differently. And that's because com contact itself comes with with his own um, with, with, with his own layout overrides. So for example, when I do now wanna wanna do a change for a com contact as well. I need to do the same here for layouts, com contacts, and then fields. Then this change to render.php. It's really technical. Um, Tony is in the afternoon doing a, a session about easy layouts, how you can do that in a more user friendly way. I really suggest to visit that session to see how what, uh, what all is possible with this layout overrides. That's really quick. Questions to this layout overrides? How is it easy to add to other components? I'm not really so. Would it be easy to add it to something new? As so you mean custom fields in general? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm the developer of it, so I would say yes. <laughs> 
Uh, there is a, one of the maintainers, uh, Thomas Hunziker, who has also his own extensions, um, Sermon Speaker, I guess is the name, and it took him like, I guess, two hours to integrate custom oh, fields. Okay, easy yeah. It's, it all depends. If you really follow the Joomla standards on some point, then it should be a relatively quick task. Um, uh, we went to that. Then a quick excourse to ACL and multi-language. Um, every field, as I already mentioned, has an access level. It defines who can see the field. It uh, gets applied in the form and also, also on the front end. So when there is some data you want to, want to allow only for, um, for special visitors, user group, you can change the access level. Um, also the permissions, there are the standard permissions who can edit uh, the field, who can create the field. The important permission is the one we saw already, is who can edit values for that field. So it allows you to define who can actually change the value for that field when you edit an article or a contact. Um, a typical use case for that is the, I made it here the certification that you can can define what the user has for a certification level. Normally, you don't want to allow the user to change that value. You just want to allow the admin to change that value. Otherwise, the user can, <laughs> can give itself the certification pro. Um, that's a typical use case of that. And also, multi-language is supported. I know for, for native English speaker, this is not so, not so important feature. But uh, for us, uh, for example, in the German part of the world, uh, we use that quite often. You can assign a field to a language. Um, then the field appears only when you edit an article of that language. Um, that's the Joomla way. If you don't want to duplicate the fields, um, the labels are translated. So you can then create, um, for a label, you can create the key and you can make a language override and then that field gets the label displayed in the corresponding language of the override. Yeah, that's basically is it. Um, we can now make, I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, I guess we have almost like 10 minutes, so yeah. Um, for me, it would be interesting, yeah. Could you explain a little bit about the associations of the multi-language fields? Um, the question was the multi-language fields. You create a field in your with the language? Yeah. Yeah, the field, every field has its, um, has its, has a language attribute. And like that, you can say, okay, I want that field should only be shown when um, when the article is also due for that language. Does that answer your question? So, if you have uh, like two language, you create two fields in two different language, and then the user is creating uh, an article. The field of that co corresponding language will show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, initially, but when he changed the language and saves, then then the the right field is changed. Yeah, we didn't implement it on on that level. But even as I said, you can you can give. Mm. But if you don't want to duplicate the field, you can, for example, give it such a translation key, and then um, when you go here to language, you can do an override with that key then, and then it's per language is then displayed. And so you basically use then one field, but it's displayed in different languages. Well, you can 
dog is a long, long string. You can do it in the, in the level, you can do it in the title, and it's in the value you count. Just yeah. to avoid duplication, because some value, for example, you have <coughs> value with, for example, number of duration 60 minutes. So with, in, in, in English, in French, in German, would be 60, with CD 60, so we just need to consider the level, it's fine. But for example, for other, for companies, for example, if you, if you name Germany in English, with Germany, if you name it in, in, in German, with the be So we need to change that. So that's why we need to have two fields, or, am I right? Or? I mean, the, the value itself, it's the value itself is kind of always attached to, to the article. So, like when you're editing a French article, you edit, you insert the value in the French format. Is that answering your question? Yeah, I, what my, my concern is so some content could be the same in all languages when you use like a string, mm -hmm. like language override. But how you could use that, you use language override in the level as well to have to back in translated and as far as you can. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. the is, is, is good yeah, the label is always translated, also in the backend. Yes? Um, you have fields that you could, with the ACL set, that they could be written in, in the front end or the back end, in both. So when you create a field, you can choose whether it appears in the editor in the front end or the back end. That's not. Editing, editing. Yeah, that's controlled to through that setting, not through ACL. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's using the jeweler. Um, no, yes, I mean, I mean, so I'm jumping to my next question. Following on from that, um, if you do that and somebody set a value in the back end, mm -hmm. so you say, say you set it for um, administrator, and mm -hmm. somebody edits the article in the back end and sets a value. If that article is then re-edited at the front end, that value is it's still set, it's not lost during the editing the front end, is that right? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I, honestly, <laughs> I didn't, I never tried, but it should not be lost. Right, in which case, could we consider adding a new an ACL option for the fields so that only certain user groups can, or access levels can write the value of the field? As if I understood you right, that's that's here. Just when you have everybody, right? Yeah. 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 Two more questions. Good. Who? Because when I think of, um, you've got those articles or what are you searching against all those uh, custom fields? Is it a case you have to build, you know, a custom module like the Gentleman Elevator did, or is it do you have options in? Uh, the search module, for instance, be able to drag those fields and search against those particular fields? Um, not in the default search. Um, what is done, as the question was, um, if you can search by fields, um, the default Joomla search, um, just when you search, for example, in articles also, it searches also in the fields. But you can't just say, I want to say, say that it should only search in that particular field. Yes? Uh, on, a, well, on a very technical level, uh, basically, so where, uh, where, can, uh, where can you access the fields in the code? Uh, I, I mean, for example, you have a block layout and the, uh, you create an HTML uh, override for the block layout and you can, you can fetch the fields from the uh, dollar item uh, objects, uh, as I saw. Is there also some easier way, like is there a, uh, an, a method within the Joomla API to access the fields yet? Like at a, uh, I say I want to get the values for field group, whatever. So there is a fields helper where you can, uh, when you can get the fields for the uh, for the context, for for example, for com content or the article, where you pass also the article to it. But for example, when you're in the blog layout or so, you have a you have on the article itself you have a field JC fields, and that's basically an array of the custom fields. 
Is that answering your question? Some more questions? <laughs> yeah, if not, then I would say um, we're at the end. Um, I'm around at the conference. If there, I'm always happy to hear feedback or if there are more questions or so, then don't hesitate to, to contact me and uh, we can have a chat about it. Good. Then I would say thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs> <laughs>